Hello! The Knockout Framework provides facilities for doing component-based development. In this screencast I'd like to take a look at what that means. We're going to take the Hello World example as a starting point and then we're going to create a component from it and see what benefits it brings us in our application. We'll get started by creating a new Knockout application. We'll call it Hello World. We'll specify that we want to use Bower to access our Knockout libraries and click Finish. Here's a basic structure for an application. We'll now add Knockout using Bower. Click Add and we look for Knockout. We search. And here we can see that the various knockout libraries are available. We'll use the basic starting point, which is the basic knockout library. And we edit and we click OK. And now in our Bower file, we see that knockout is included and also that a start is being made in terms of setting up the project to actually include that knockout library. You can see in the Bower Components section here, we have now Knockout included. We can right click on the project and we could do the install from here, but it's been done automatically for us. So we're all set up to use Knockout. We have an index file as a starting point. We'll drag the Knockout library into our project. There we have it. Okay, so let's also include a our own JavaScript file. So we'll call this one app, inside of which we're going to have our business logic. So our HTML file and our JavaScript file. Okay, so now we switch to the Hello World example and we'll copy and we'll paste and then we'll take the business logic copy that and paste it into the JavaScript file and we specify that we want to see this inside of the embedded browser we run the application and here we see the result so we have two observable properties and a computer property and this works exactly as one would expect. Now let's turn this into a component based application. Now, I've prepared a little bit of code which is going to change this from not being component based to being component based. So we'll create a new JavaScript file here we call it app component based just to see the difference. So I'll paste into it my component. So here we have a component that we are registering and it's called user. And let's compare it with the original code that we had. We put them side by side. So on the left side we have a not component based view model and here we have a component based view model. In the component-based view model, we can see that we have a component called user, and we still have a first name and a last name as before, and we also have a computed property as before, and we have the apply bindings. In this case, we are not passing in the parameters um, through the view model instantiation call here, and we're going to pass it in via parameters from our view. And you can also see that we have a template here. So the HTML is, in this case, not defined in the view, but in a template. And the template will be applied when we access this component and connect it into the view. So let's do that now. We'll open our HTML file. Here it is. And instead of 
using app.js, we're going to use app component base JS. Okay. So right now that doesn't mean anything yet. So um, what we're going to do as well is we'll again run the application into the um, browser. Now of course it won't actually work because um, we need to make use of this component which is called user. Now there's different ways we can do that. We'll open the browser and we'll try and leave it open. So we're going to dock it so that we can see what's going on as we're working with our code. So first of all, let's remove this content. Now let's start using our component. We open the element in our view and we can see that in the code completion we can find our component. Here is our custom knockout element user. There it is. And next we look for the parameters, so params, and again code completion, control space, and we see first, that's fine, and we put in there our initial value for the first parameter, comma, and then we also have last, and we put in there our parameter for the second um, parameter. And we save, and you can see that this works exactly as before. That's the first way of using our user component that we've defined in our view model. Second way is we're going to create some div tags. And in the div tag, we're going to use the data bind attribute from knockout. And you can see we get code completion. So if you want to see what that is all about, we, you can read the documentation directly here. But next, we can press control space and we can see that um, in here there is a attribute called component. So the binding component, and there's again documentation that you can read about this directly embedded. So we point to component, and now we open and close the braces here, and inside of that you can see there's name and there's params. So we choose name, and we create completion again, and we can see, ah, there's user, and then comma, and then next we have params, and in the params, we can see we have first, so we do exactly as before, planet, and then a comma, and then last, and we put earth. Control S to save it, and we have exactly the same code as before, and it works exactly as originally. The point is that now we have a component based um, knockout example. You can see that we have all of our business logic, so we have observable properties and a computer property in our view model expressed in JavaScript with a template. So we can change the template in here and make this, uh, for example, an H2, control S to save, and immediately you can see the update. But on the side of the view, um, what this means is that we have um, a much nicer structure, much neater and cleaner, and you can also see that we can now um, copy this line down, control S to save it, and now we have two instances of our user component expressed in our view. So this really allows you to do component-based development with Knockout um, via the facilities that Knockout provides. And as you can see, this very nice integration for all of this with NetBeans via control space, which brings up all the different parameters and components that you uh, might want to use with um, Knockout together with all the documentation that relates to it. That's it. Have fun with Knockout and component-based development in NetBeans.